me in the trail, it's going down. Leave me in the mall, it's going down. Leave me in the club, it's going down. Anywhere you meet me, guaranteed to go down. Mock F number two, do the damn thing. Alright, we're back. Tankers Fantasy Football. We got another mock draft here. Once again, we are using draft cal or football. What is it? I don't Fantasy even know. Football Fantasy football calculator. calculator. That's Fantasy what we're football on. football calculator. Last time we did a 12-team PPR. This time we're going to switch it up, do a 10-team. I know most of the big money leagues are the 12ers, but... You know, a lot of a lot of the homer lot of the leagues, a lot there. of the buddy leagues, a lot of the work leagues, or a lot of ten, possibly even eight teamers. So we're gonna dial it down a notch and do a ten team PPR draft for you guys tonight. See what's going on with a little, with a couple extra less with a couple less dudes hanging out out there. All right, so for me, I'm gonna take it at the nine spot of this ten, while you're taking it up toward the two. Uh, what is it up the two? <laughs> what kind of is the difference for you between the David Johnson, the Le'Veon Bell, and the Ezekiel Elliott? I think it's just kind of who you like the most, and I kind of wish I had the. I was taking the number three spot instead of the number two here. I guess I could have, but you know, running out there at the two, it's kind of a who you feel better about because I mean, I guess Le'Veon's got a little more injury risk and a little more suspension risk than these other guys. <laughs> but if you're talking about sheer talent and downright amazeability. You're talking Le'Veon Bell in some of these runs. I mean, he's just gliding out there. I don't even think he's moving his feet. He's just kind of... I, I think if he plays 16 games, it's literally impossible for him to not be Especially the number one running back. I'm not talking an RB1. I'm talking the number one guy. It's literally impossible if he plays every game. I mean, they're running him out in the slot. Like, what? At least five plays a game. It's crazy. He's getting six, seven catches easy. Draft is just about to start here. Who are you hoping he slides to you? Number two. I mean, I guess I'm just. I guess if Bell's there, I'm gonna take him. I mean, he's my he's my sexy boy. I mean, if this was a keeper league or a dynasty, I'd probably take one of the other two guys because they're a few years younger. But as far as this year goes in a redraft, I'm gonna take Bell if he's there at two. All right, number one just went David Johnson. So your boy Le'Veon Bell is still available there for you. I'm gonna swoop in there. Well, I, I'm going to take him. I just took him, locked him up, and I assume Ezekiel Elliott's going to go right after me. Oh, he he didn't. Let me see this here. Oh, he didn't. We got Antonio Brown going at three, and then what? We got Odell Beckham going at four here, so there's Ezekiel Elliott still on the board. All right, Elliott just went off at five oh. real quick. No shock. Back to the Odell quick. It's tough for me to pass... On Elliott, I mean, I like what you get out of Beckham, but for me, I feel like the first three have guys to. on my board are these three running backs. To. I love Antonio Brown. If you're picking the first in the top three, I think you have to take one of these three running backs. And I mean, oh, oh, Antonio Brown is like the only exception to the rule, I guess, if you're just in love with it. But Odell Beckham over Ezekiel Elliott, in my eyes, is just complete insanity. All right, next two picks here. We had Julio Jones, Mike Evans, both very high ceiling guys. That's yeah, that's pretty chart. Pretty that's standard. The, yeah. All right, number eight, Lashawn McCoy, hoping he can do what he did last year, stay healthy there. Number nine, it's up to me here, and I know there's a lot of young guys still available, but for me, I think I'm gonna go with the old trusty. And I think I'm gonna pick Jordy Nelson right here. I mean, this is a guy. He did miss 2015, but his last three full seasons, this guy's averaging 1,350 yards, and he's averaging like 12 touchdowns over those three. I mean, three Aaron Rodgers loves him as long as he keeps uh, performing on the football field. He's looking to be a very high end wide receiver, possibly top five. All right, around the turn, number 10 spot, double dipped on some running backs. So Melvin Gordon. And then De Devontae Freeman. I like those picks. And I really, turn. I love those picks. I think those. I like are, those picks at the turn for him. I think those are guys. I mean, I feel like actually pretty good there value for both of them. There's a lot but, more wide receiver talent available later than compared to running backs. I think he just uh, gobbled up a couple of pretty solid RB ones to fill in both of his running back spots right. there. So I'm though, proud of him. I was kind of hoping that one of those guys would slide. But one guy who I really feel like is still in that top tier of the wide receivers that slipped out of the first round 
AJ Green, who I'm taking. I think I would have taken him over Jordy, where he took Jordy. Actually, I think I would have. I mean, it's it's really another spot of who you like more. AJ Green again. I feel like he just doesn't get the love from a guy like Julio because he's flashier. But if you look at AJ's numbers, I mean, if he two. plays 16 games. He's basically guaranteed 10 touchdowns. He's going to get you 90 balls. He's going to get you 1,300 yards. I mean, if you can somehow luck yourself, I mean, this is a 10-teamer, so he probably has a decent chance to get himself a decent run, running back one and two here later in the third and fourth, maybe fifth round. But, I mean, to get these Jordy Nelson, A.J. Green cock-locked and loaded here on their wide receivers, I mean, that's boom busting. That's boom showcase showdown I mean, every single you, week. You're going out every week knowing that you might have the two best players Sexy in the Sexy boy matchup. deluxe. All right, two guys, two backs went off here. Jordan Howard, what do you think? I mean, Jordan Howard is pretty, I mean, that's the first bear off the board. I don't really like it. The bears are kind of a garbage fire, and I know this is where Jordan Howard's been going. So I know he's going to go like early to late second here. I mean, early to mid second here. But I mean, I, I don't know. I, it's pretty toughy. I think I would have probably taken him. I think I probably would have taken like a Michael Thomas over him right here. I think I would have. Yeah. And the guy right after Howard, J.J., who I feel like that's still pretty good value there. And Michael Thomas just went off, who we are talking about, who would probably yeah, take over go. Howard. Michael Thomas, I mean, this guy is a rookie. Did it for you. You'd think he only can get better, especially with Cooks gone, Cooks taking targets away. So, my goodness, I mean, this guy's got Julio Jones and Michael Thomas, and he's feeling very good about himself. I thought right I, now. I felt good about my receivers. I'm kind of in love with this. This guy's, guy's feeling too, good so. about himself right now. We got uh, Demarco Murray off the board with just standard chalk. I don't know. I kind of so, feel like he can't repeat what he did last year. I feel like Henry has to at least eat into the goal line work a little bit more. He so, was eating them goal line work a little bit in those last few games last year. He was coming in. Oh, the Diddies. Oh, we got a, we got an appearance from the Diddies. <laughs> so that's three teams so far that have gone to running back, running back. Hey, and diddies. I feel like really if there's – I feel like that might be a decent strategy this year because it's very top end heavy with these backs. There's a lot of good value you can hey, find later. Amari Cooper off the board, Des Bryant off the board. Who are you uh, looking at here? I mean, I'm looking at two guys, and I'm looking at T.Y. Hilton and Brandon Cooks, and I kind of feel the same about them. But since he, T.Y. is kind of a good like what eight to ten spots above uh, <laughs> Cooks on the. On the rankings here on the uh, calculator, so I think I might take Ty and hope that since Cooks is down on the rankings, he might slide down to me here after the turn. I'm gonna load up some Ty and, and uh, hope and wait. And Ty again, if he actually, led the league in yards last year. Yeah, this guy was insane last year. I know Moncrief's coming back, but I still think he's gonna be a top ten guy for you. I mean, I'm, so I like the value there in the late second. I think Hilton and Cooks are kind of like the same guy, but think. Since Hilton was so much farther up the ranks, I feel like this is a safer. No, nope, you got Lamar Miller. Come on, one more. And oh. Doug Martin went before uh, Cook. Doug Baldwin. Or Doug, yeah. <laughs> I sure hope. Yeah, Doug goodness, Martin. goodness. Goodness. He went on. Doug, Doug Baldwin before Cooks. And I don't know how I feel about that. I know uh, he's kind of your trusty there he with is Ross. Trusty. But Cooks. If you're looking for the title. I think Cooks is the pick over Doug Baldwin this year. If you're looking to get, bring home that bacon and bring home that title, I think Cooks is a definite play, a definite pick over Doug Baldwin this year. Especially move, I mean, him and Tom Brady can get the report. If he can learn those route trees, it could come. I mean, it could turn to something special. This guy's a lock for at least 80, 90 catches, thousand yards, and probably minimum seven, eight touchdowns. And with Brady, you never know what a ceiling can be. First tight end off the board and Gronkowski. And we got Gurley, who I don't know. I mean, what do you I guess think he about turn Gurley here. Gurley, I, I got Diddy's like, hair all over my nose. <laughs> I feel like the jury's still out on the Todd Gurley, so I feel like a third round. Damn you, Diddy's. I mean, this guy's drafting Todd Gurley as his RB1, but if if he's your RB2, I kind of feel it in the third round. But it's still a risky play. They're a bad, bad offense. Man, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess, I mean, who else is available? The guy took two wide receivers, so who else is available for him? I guess it came down between Gurley and guys like Fournette and Marshawn Lynch and Spencer Ware. And I guess you got to give me Gurley at that point. I mean, yeah, if, you, if you're going to go with the running back, I think you have to go Gurley there. We got Hopkins off the board, another guy that had a big letdown last year. It might be on the comeback trail. 
I like Hopkins on the comeback trail before I like Gurley on the comeback trail, that's yeah. for sure. Especially since there's actual quarterback change. With Goff, he's, I think it's going to be pretty much the same thing. You're going to see eight, nine, ten guys in the box. and All right. First quarterback gone. Quarterback Rodgers is off. Allen Robinson, who I think will have a nice bounce back year. So I think late third, third round is just good. full of guys with bounce back potential out there. A bunch of, bunch of letdowns in 2016 in the third round we're looking at. All right, another quarterback off, Tom Brady. So two quarterbacks in the last that. three picks. I mean, I know Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady are next, levels, next level guys that would probably win you some games, but I just can't see myself ever paying that third round price on a quarterback that's just crazy to me but i know we talked about it in the last mock i feel like if you are going to go for a quarterback i think somewhere in like the fourth round might be the best option because i feel like this is obviously a 10 team but in the 12 teams i think third and four it feels like you're kind of stretching for guys and sometimes you can get a good value at the quarterback there i am I mean, i'm crazy i don't even think about quarterback to at least like the ninth round i mean i'm thinking I mean, you're going to get your guys, like, even if it comes down to the bottom of the barrel, you have to make a play before the cliff is right there. I, I'm in love with guys like Eli Manning and especially Jameis Winston this yeah, year. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. I think both those guys are going to be top 10 plays. Eli with the additional weapons. And then you're taking a look at talking and also additional weapons. You got Winston. So not only He's you got DJX you got, and OJ Howard. You got Evans. You got DJX. You got OJ Howard. I mean, this guy, they're going to do some work out there in the offense. While we were rambling, I took Real? Leonard Fournette. <laughs> <laughs> First running back on the board. That's the second yeah, jag in the third that's round. That's pretty good for waiting on so, it, though. That's decent. I might like, get a bell cow out there. I feel like right now, late third, I don't know if he's going to be that way in another month or two. We'll see how he shoots with the stock right now. I'm feeling really happy getting him in the third. Hopefully but he has a solid camp in preseason. They just go ahead and hand him that bell cow status week one. Hopefully he don't have to wait till week four or five to really. I, th I think he's going to be starting right away here. Around the turn, Keenan Allen went. I feel like if he's going to stay it. healthy, he's obviously a good player there, but he no, can't he stay he's healthy. Not gonna. So <laughs> <laughs> it's not happening. He played like what? Like 30 snaps last year? It's ridiculous. Spencer Ware. Who he's been finally dropping in some of these mocks, and I think rightly should. They're looking at the other guy in camp. Uh, what's even his Hunt. name? Hunt, Kareem Hunt. He's looking like he's impressing coaches at KC. He could be sneaky play for Hunt as a. Oh, sleeper. I'm dialing up on my later rounds this, in this draft. I might scoop him up. You never know. All right, I'm getting back to me around the turn, and this is a very got... scary running back. Running back. But I'm going to go Marshawn Lynch here. And I feel like second best line in football behind Dallas coming out of retirement. And you know that the Raiders got him to play. And you know Oakland wants to get that title before the Raiders leave town. <laughs> and Beast Mode wants to get them, get it for him. And he, dude, he's going to go all in. This is all or nothing. He's not, no hold back. They're going to give him the ball. They brought him in to give him the ball. I'm really not afraid at all. No. I think if he, I, I actually feel really only, confident. Somehow, maybe you know, gets injured because he took a year off football is like the only thing I can really think. But he's never really had been an injury guy his whole career. Besides, yeah, besides his really his last That's year. That's the only so. thing I can really think of to be afraid of. But if he can, I mean, if he's playing football for the Oakland Raiders and behind that offensive line, I'm thinking there's no way Beast Mode isn't a top ten top 10 running back. This I mean, you look what Latavius Murray did all his one yard touchdowns in there. Ridiculous. If a dude like Latavius Murray can do that behind that offensive line, I mean, Beast Mode taking a year off to eat some Skittles, he's going to roll through them out there. Like, he's gonna, it's going to be butter out there. All right, Travis Kelsey off the board, who, like we've talked about before, I feel like he's the number one tight end in this definitely, draft. Definitely, definitely. He's the only top end tight end who doesn't have an injury problem. And he's the target machine in Kansas City. The only thing you just wish those touchdowns would take a little uptick because, you know, old Alex Smith there. But, I mean, if, if, if Kelsey catches. can get into those double-digit touchdowns, I mean, watch out. I mean, we I mean, be talking if Kelsey, about. If Kelsey can get 10 touchdowns, oh, baby. we're talking he's like all-time great tight end fantasy seasons here. Where are you? I think Kelsey's my number one tight end all day long. Gronkowski, I mean, three back series. I love you, bud, but you are cashed. You are done. <laughs> all right, D-Train, excellent That's great floor. value. In the fourth, 
in a 10 team that is That's awesome. great value. Carlos Hyde, not feeling that at all. There's talks that they might even surprise and shock the world and take Fournette at number two overall. So I think they're losing faith on Hyde. And I wouldn't be shocked if for some reason he doesn't even find never, his way would, on the roster. I wouldn't even draft Hyde this year. Like, I'm serious. Like, don't <laughs> even do it. Even if he slips to, like, later on, you're thinking maybe, like, the sixth, seventh round, you're like, ah, it's good. I wouldn't even do it. I mean, his own team doesn't even like him. I mean, what needs to be seen here? I mean, they're just looking for any excuse not to give him the football. Kyle Shanahan's pounding tables to bring in the bring in his boy. Pounding tables during the draft to draft that running back because he wasn't on the GM's board. Out there pounding tables. And I am shocked that they did not get a higher-end running back in this draft. You take a look at what Shanahan was able to do with guys like Freeman, like Coleman. I mean, Freeman was what? I don't know. Was he like a fourth-round pick, something like that? Yeah, it was. I mean, he was not high. And look at Freeman. He's magic. Kyle Shannon is the whisperer out there. And he brought in his boy, and he likes him. And I'm thinking if he can learn the playbook, get it in there, they're looking for any excuse to get hide out there. All right, you're on the clock, so we're going to run clock. off some names. We got Alshon Jeffrey. If he's healthy, I think that is tremendous value with Wentz there. With, I mean, this guy was going second round last year, and he's finding himself in the fourth. So we got CJ Crowell. I don't like either one of those picks. Who you got? I'm going with Trell Pryor. I'm going with three wide receivers in a row. I led off with Le'Veon Bell. I've gone T.Y. I've gone Cooks. Now I'm going to get the sexy upside of Trell Pryor. I'm in love with it. I mean, he had a great. I mean, he had a great year in Cleveland last year, playing playing for like five or six different quarterbacks. And him and Kirk Cousins are both after that money. They're, both they're in it together. They're both. They're in it together. Yeah, they're in it to win it together. He's 6'4", he's 220, he's running like... They what? might he's, both be in San Fran next year. He's a sexy boy. I think he's got sexy boy deluxe potential. I think he could be a target monster with Garcon and Djax out of the picture. And I'm all in. In the fourth round... On Terrell Pryor. In the fourth round, I think Pryor is legitimate top 10, top I'm in, 12 play. I'm in love with it. I mean, he was top 10... Till like week 13 or 14 last year, and all of a sudden, like, you know, it just got this quarterback situation just got too bad. <laughs> it couldn't get any worse. It, it just got, got worse. so bad. And, you know, he just, those weeks 14, 15, and 16 in the fantasy playoffs, he left a little sour taste in your mouth, but I'm telling you, do not lose faith. <laughs> I'm telling you, get back on that horse. Uh, I'm telling you, he's going to bring you in the title this year. All right, around the turn, and Devontae Adams, who went from absolute bummitude last year to find his way in the fourth round, mm. solid. I'm a little afraid round. of it, but by God, I mean, if he's I mean, on the football field for the Packers, how can you hate it? I mean, look at him no, go. Seriously, I mean, who is Randall Cobb? Where did he go? I mean, they're gonna play Randall Cobb too, but I, I don't think Devontae Adams is looking to find his way on the bench no, anytime soon. I think it is solid Jordy and Adams all the way. I don't think they're looking to play Cobb outside anymore. So I'm looking. I think it's in the two wide receiver yeah. sets. I think it's Jordy. I think it's Adams. And if Adams on the football field for the majority of snaps for the Green Bay Packers, I don't see any way. I mean, just I even and I think Montgomery too is gonna take some cheese away from Cobb. So I think Cobb is a borderline untouchable guy for me at this yeah, point, especially right. where he's getting drafted. Oh, yeah, I'm kind of on falling out of favor with old Cobb. All right, you're up Back again. Jordan clock. Reed is off the board. So the, what do you have, three tight ends go here. So who are you looking? You went three wide receivers in a row. You can't possibly get a bench uh, receiver here. No, nah, we go two flex. He'd be, still be a starter, but I'm still not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna dial it up. I know McCaffrey's still there, but I am in love with it. I'm going Joe Mixon. I hate on Jeremy Hill. Gio Bernard is coming off that ACL. And when was Gio Bernard and Jeremy Hill good? When were they good? You look at it. You gotta think it's rookie year. I think they were both so good. They're rookie getting, years. If you're getting Cincinnati boy, I think you go and get them while they're a rookie. And if you're Dalton's looking, already singing the praises and out there talking about how he can catch the ball, he can run the ball, he's an all package situation. And I don't see, I don't even know if Jeremy Hill's going to be on this football team when the final 53 man comes around, even if he doesn't get traded. And Gio Bernard, I don't think there's any way, shape, or form he's on the football field for week one. So no, I'm I, thinking, I, I think, saw systems go here, people. I'm in love with it. Joe Mixon would have been 
I shouldn't say would have been. He probably would have been the second running back draft in this draft if it wasn't for off-field issues. He would have been a top 10 pick. That's for sure. Lock it up. I'm in love with it. But I feel like the Cincinnati rookie running backs, and he's probably the most athletic out of the three that they've had. I dial it up over McCaffrey. All right, we had a huge run of some receivers here. We've got PPR guys like Jarvis Landry in the fifth. Tyreek Hill, who I'm not hating on. I love him, but means. that's a high price for Tyreek Hill. He I mean, he better produce at that. Yeah, if I, yeah, if you're getting him at that price, you're counting on him. And I, I, I mean, to take him over a guy like Crabtree, who but, just went, is I think is complete insanity. I really yeah, do. I think you got to lock up Crabtree. I would have taken Crabtree if I didn't take those three wide receivers before him. I would have. All right, Sammy Watkins, Greg Olson, and G I was hoping. That Julius Thomas or Julian Tom, Julian Edelman would fall to me. One, but, one of them jewels. <laughs> but he didn't. He got sniped up, and we're kind of in that spot where yeah, the dark zone. there's really not too much value that I'm feeling right now. So, Falling into the I'm black, not a big yeah. quarterback really guy either. But I feel like if you're gonna really splurge in the fifth round, I feel like Drew Brees is too good of a value here in the fifth round. There's really one guy I'd really only take here. I mean, over over Drew Brees, and his 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 question marks are very high. That's Martavis Bryant, but I think you got to go with the I'm sexy going, deluxe. I'm going Drew Brees. I mean, this guy. The, do you know the last time Drew Brees has thrown less than 30 touchdowns? 2007. 2007. His second year in New Orleans was the last time he failed to reach 30 touchdowns. 2007. This guy's thrown over 4,800 yards the past six years. This guy is a lock among locks for an every week QB1. I just started drinking <laughs> legally, mind you, when Drew Brees last time was throwing for under 30 touchdowns. <laughs> That's phenomenal. I'm proud of him. <laughs> this guy is undeniable. You, I mean, how's, how can you not take him at that value? Martavius Bryant, like he was saying, potentially, he got sniped right after Breeze. Delaney Walker, who is another guy, I feel like <laughs> he's is a, is a know, lock I'm, at I'm the one, tight end spot. I'm thinking about something. <laughs> <laughs> Back to me here. And I'm kind of feeling Christian McCaffrey. I'm going with it. It's my second rookie running back. But you know what? I feel like he once again has I a high to... ceiling, and he can find his way into that low-end RB1, high-end RB2. I mean, if I was in love with Joe Mixon, I mean, McCaffrey would have definitely been my play. And you got him, like, what, 12 picks later, or at least or 10 later than me. I mean, my goodness, that's pretty good value, even though I, I'm not really in love with the McCaffrey situation, but... You got the top two rookie running backs as far as the draft spot goes. We All got right. Golden Tate, which is an unsavory pick. <laughs> Blue Powell <laughs> shot up. Blue Powell in the sixth. Blue Powell. You have some believers yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's looking good in spurts. But I feel like in I the sixth like round, going it's into the high. season as Will Powell as your RB two, I feel like that's just a bad spot that you don't want to believe in. You're, you don't want to be in. You're setting yourself up for a major letdown. <laughs> You're going into the season with Blue Pile in your starting lineup. Is, or, uh, it's, uh, might, All right, that Adrian be Peterson. Here. And Adrian Peterson above Mark Ingram, so that's kind of a surprising mm, I don't want either one of them, really. We got another tight end in Eifert and then a couple more quarterbacks, which is good because I hate on drafting quarterbacks even before the 9th, 10th round. We got Ryan and Luck going, which is fine by me. I'm going to take my Wait. second flex play. Feeling good about it, and you know, a little banged up last year, might be on the come up. Dante Moncrief, right here in the second so to last getting, pick in the sixth round. You're going that T.Y. Moncrief combo, huh? Give me all. <laughs> Give me every Colt. Throw the ball, Indianapolis Colts. I'm talking huck it, chuck it football. <laughs> if the right. ball's in the air. It's going to. I'm getting too. fantasy points. That's what's happening in Indianapolis. <laughs> All right, Brandon Marshall, late sixth, or no, where are we? Yeah, late sixth. I don't feel like that's bad value. 
For Brandon Marshall, this guy was going like late first, early second last year. We'll see if he can get it going with Eli Manning. Who knows? Uh, Ty Montgomery off. Again, a nice PPR play. Yeah, I had two running backs that I was thinking about here and that, after the turn, and he was one of them, but I still got my boy. All right, who are you looking here? I'm going to scoop up Tevin Coleman. I know he's kind of a second fiddle, but in burst, he looked incredibly sexy out there. And somehow, yeah. I mean, you gotta think if some if, if there's any guy out there. I mean, he's technically my first bench spot. So if there's any guy, out, I mean, if Freeman somehow goes down, this guy becomes like instant top five running back. Oh, even Coleman for a good chunk of the season, he was like number or he was at RB one. But man. I feel like even with Freeman on the field, this guy can he's still, still go out get, there and get to twelve PPR points. Exactly, PPR. He's gonna catch you balls. He's gonna get you those. You know, 30, 40, 50 yard touchdowns over the middle for you. I mean, you could blow it up. It only takes one play and he makes your week. All right, back to back running backs. We got Eddie Lacy off there, and then we got the Latavius Murray. This five hole, who I'm actually really feeling his team right now. I feel like he's doing pretty good. I feel like he's getting some decent value. Drafted Cam Newton. Eh, I don't know if I'm in love with that play. But, but hey, Cam Newton, every other year, you, you got to look back at it, it's true. Every other year, Cam Newton is a great fantasy quarterback, and the other year, he's a mediocre to borderline low-end low, low -end fantasy quarterback, and this is the year. Get him while he's both low. Both to be the sexy deluxe. First year, he was sexy deluxe. Second year, he was salty. Third year, he was sexy deluxe. Fourth year, he was salty. Fifth year, you know what that means. Sexy Deluxe. <laughs> Alright, let's take a look. We guys, we got guys go Jimmy Graham, <laughs> Dougie Fresh, Doug Martin, Mark Ingram, who fell over a full round past Peterson here. So it's up to me. I haven't gone receiver since the second round. And I feel like I'm going to get a pretty good value in Emmanuel Sanders here. Bring it. I believe he's gone over a thousand yards the past three seasons and has like twenty touchdowns. Very high floor. And has like touchdown twenty touchdowns in that span. Both those Denver receivers have excellent floors. Very high floors and and the ceilings are kind of mediocre, but if you're looking for wide receiver three production, in honesty, I mean Emmanuel Sanders is giving you that all day long. In honesty, and borderline wide receiver I two. I feel like Sanders has a higher ceiling than Demarius. What do you think? He, for a stretch there toward the end, it definitely looked like he was the number one man there for a while. I had Demarius on a couple teams, and every week I just watched Emmanuel Sanders rip my heart out. <laughs> it was rough. All right, back to me. Derek Carr went off. Larry Fitzgerald went off. Larry Fitzgerald, excellent sell a high candidate. He'll be, mark my words, he's going to be like top five wide receiver come week three or four. Oh, yeah. <laughs> By the end of September, he'll be like out of the – He'll have five touchdowns, and you'll be like, how the fuck is this happening? <laughs> but that's the time where you need to sell. All right. I'm scooping up another receiver here, and we kind of hit on him early. Deshaun Jackson. Mike Evans on the other side. He's finally not a number one receiver on a team, and they're going to be throwing the ball a lot. I really I'm like that the DJ. pick. DJX from the bench rolling in on the bye weeks. I mean, that's when you can catch one of them 80-yard – it only, catch, yeah. Yeah, it only takes one with the DJX, and even if it's not one, it's still maybe like three for 80, which in PPR is 11 points, and I'm down and with that on week, the bye week, baby. If you can get double digits out of your guy, that's all you need. All right, we got some Stefan Diggs, who's also one of those guys you might pop off in that September that you might be looking to sell high. He's done his first two years. We got a quarterback and Russell Wilson off the board. Yeah, guy, once again, the drums are building up about a mirror there's, Abdul, but I ain't buying saying it. he might be the bell cow there. Oh, maybe been saying it and saying it and saying it. But I don't know if he can stay healthy. Yeah, maybe I they, don't know if he truly has it in him to be a three-down uh, back. I feel like him and Theo Riddick are kind of the same guy. Man, if they say it, maybe it'll come true, but I'm just not about it. <laughs> they say They've, it been saying it. They've been saying it for like three seasons, and I'm not into it at all. <laughs> I've seen enough. <laughs> All right. Calvin Benjamin with his weight problems is off the board. Martellus Bennett in the eighth round. That was a good pick. I wanted him. I wanted him to slide to me here in the next couple picks, but he stole him from me. We got Derrick Henry, which I do, which I really like right there. As his, well, I'm with a number, eh, just third running back, but I still 
God. I mean, it's pretty too early. It's pretty too early. Yeah. He might be the yeah. number one running back. God, he is. I mean, <laughs> he might start him. Crowell and Lacey. I mean, I know Crowell and the hype and the caca and all the business, <laughs> but. I'm not into it. I'm definitely not into Lacey. I'd rather have Rawls, who is going much later in drafts. I mean, they're pro size. I mean, yeah, I don't know. The but. price you're paying for those guys. <laughs> All right, Bennett's off the board. <laughs> oh, man. Tyler, what happened? Yeah. You're, 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 Bennett and then Henry. You're tight and I'm you're up. going for. I'm going for. I'm taking the reindeer games because this is the tight end cliff. I feel like I don't take the reindeer games. I, I mean, Hunter Henry's still on the board, but I don't know. That's who I'm kind of hoping's going to slide. Mike here. Williams is gone. Mike Williams is there. I feel like he might be stealing some red zone targets if he gets on the football field. I just don't know. I mean, Hunter Gates is still around. I feel like I'm going to get a guy who's at least the number one tight end on the football team in reindeer games at a resurgence year last year. He did. It was very good season out of the games. All right, Berg, I feel like is going to have a very high – I feel like he's going to be another great play again this year. And for the eighth <laughs> round, I think that's a good mark there for him. Theo Riddick, who we talked about, pretty similar to Abdullah there, not really feeling it. It is PPR. So if you're getting them on your bench, I guess that's not that bad of a play. I mean, I'm going to take, I'm scooping up here, second pick of the ninth round. You know, number one running back, you know, teams that haven't been really fruitful in running back since, like, the Tiki Barber years. But I'm going to take Paul Perkins. And he showed flashes of greatness last year. And, I mean, if they're going to give him a chance and give him the football, maybe even give him some dump-offs, which I'm kind of hoping for, the actually. He's the starter there. So. Yeah, I mean... This is pretty early mock draft. I mean, if they, you know, a lot of things could change with Paul Perkins come August. They really could. But I'm feeling it here in the early ninth. All right, Jamison Crowder, who again I think can be a very have a very productive year. A lot of weapons are gone from Washington, so I think he's going to kind of be that slot man who might get you close to 70, 80 catches. Got some garbage pail running backs coming up. <laughs> so Frank Gore went off. When is he going to end? Laguerre Blunt in the ninth round. Call me crazy, but I like Laguerre Blunt in the ninth round. I mean, if they, I feel like Philadelphia does need that tone setter with second year they quarterback. They better give it wins. to him more than they say they're going to give it to him because if they don't, that's a problem. There's, 170 is not yeah, good enough. Yeah, there's sniffs of 170. That's touches. not good enough because he's not going to catch any balls. He's going to catch like four or five balls all year. If he's only, I mean, they're, they're not going to give him 250 carries. I don't know. I mean, look, Garrett Blunt's going to be so touchdown dependent at that 170 carry mark. It's going to be ridiculous. Like, he might seriously get you, like, eight carries for 35 yards and a touchdown. Like, that might be his day. I mean, I don't even know if he had 100 yards second half of the season last year. No, I don't I think he did. He was busting him out there. He was, second half of the season, I though? I think so. I know I he hit know. a stretch where he had like, what, like <laughs> 10 touchdowns in seven games or something crazy. He had 18 touchdowns last season. I mean, there's no way he does that in Philadelphia. I'm, I'm, setting the over I'm saying under half. At, I'm yeah. saying nine. Set the over-under at nine. Set it at nine. I might take the under. I see he gets, I see he's in there seven times, at least seven times, but I don't I know. Like that. I don't know if he gets 1,000 yards either. Yeah, I don't no, think not at 170 does. carries. Ain't no damn way. All right, guys that went off, Rob Kelly, who I... I'm not feeling whatsoever. Danny Woodhead, I don't know if he's even going to be able to play first few games here. And Mike Gillisley. So I'm up here. I mean, seriously, if Mike Gillisley's going to fill that with Garrett Blunt role, I might have taken Mike Gillisley over Garrett Blunt. I don't, it's tough to have faith in these New England It backs, is. Though. It's dicey. But if, 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 I, I mean, would almost take, like, a Deion Lewis or a James White super late over Gillisley. I don't know. It's tough. I mean, <laughs> you never know. Or even a Rex Burkhead's in that situation. There's four backs that could hit it. I'm going another rookie here, and I'm going to go Corey Davis. This is a guy who might be my third wide receiver down the road here. I think he's picked a perfect spot. Mariota really needed a go-to guy. He's got Delaney there, but for receiver, you're looking at Rashard Matthews, and he's not your prototypical, you know, your Des Bryant guys, your Julio Jones, those type of boys out there for you. And I think Corey Davis is that type of guy. 
Oh, we got Willie Sneed. Then, oh, that's a pick that I wanted to make. Dalvin Cook is gone. And then, uh, who I'm, are you taking here? Alright. Oh, I, yeah. I guess I forgot Henry is available, so, so I better take him now. You got lucky out there. Alright. I feel like Henry there. I got Henry. I feel like he's kind of the last guy on the cliff. Him and Rudolph there. Alright. Cobb in the 10th round. Man, that he is down oh, there. Henry. Corey Coleman, you know, I mean, there's a little hype there, but... I say don't sleep on Corey Coleman. There's really no other guy in Cleveland. I don't even know. Kenny Britt? Is that who's their second? Yeah, Kenny, Britt, yeah, Kenny Britt's there. I mean, I think you got to go Coleman if Kenny he's Britt healthy. just went there to die, I think. <laughs> like, Dwayne, like, Dwayne Dwayne Bo, like Dwayne Bowe did. All right, Denver T's off the and Miles board. And Miles Austin, who else went there to die? <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> Go ahead and die. All right, Richard Matthews. They all float down here. Richard Matthews went, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven picks after Corey Davis, and I am picking Corey Davis all day over Richard Matthews. Uh, that's dicey, though, man. I don't know. That's a good bet to make. Who's going to have a better fantasy season this year, Richard Matthews or I Corey think, Davis? That's a good gamble. I almost take Richard Matthews. I think first quarter of the season we're talking Richard Matthews. Definitely. But I think down the road, I think Corey, da I think Corey Davis – might be a play that he might kind of starts off slow and you make that trade and he ends up helping you win a league. I think comes, you know, week 12 and after, he might be the go-to guy there. I mean, I'm a believer, but I just don't know. I think Rashard Matthews might still be the number one guy for just a long enough this year to hold him off on the old fantasy points. I mean, down the stretch, Corey Davis might be out producing him. Rashard Matthews might have enough in the tank to hold him off, baby. <laughs> Eric Decker, that's a sneaky play. I do. I'm not Check hating around. I like it. I'm not hating. I mean, well, who's the other guy? Quincy and Nunwa is really the only other competition there. And I mean, I know they got me throwing passes out there. <laughs> you might be New better. York. I don't I, even know. I'm, man, I'm gonna go hey, up in the saying? backyard, are they tune saying, it up. Are they saying Hagberg? I think I don't even. Know. I think so. Are they giving him the call uh, there? I, I might as well. I mean, they you're going to be really bad they're, anyway, they're bad so why the, not? They're bad as the damn Bears. At this point, I feel like you're locked up top five that's NFL picks, so might as well ball. just throw him out there and see what he's got. We need a triple threat toilet bowl between the Browns, the Bears, and the Jets. That's a triple, <laughs> oh. triple threat Throw the Niners bowl. in there. I don't know. The Niners, Niners, Niners defense Niners, is Niners. getting a little more respectful. but John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan alone make them more respectable than any of those other three teams. <laughs> They're offense, though. We're the weapons. John Lynch. And old old college. I mean, you got Brian Hoyer running the show, babe. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Jamal <laughs> Charles is off. Who says Brian Hoyer is not better than Bears guy? I mean, he threw for what five games in a row for three hundred yards. That's guy's been phenomenal. All right, how long are you waiting on quarterback? I'm gonna sit on it. <laughs> when is it? Where are we at here, Jamal Charles? I'm gonna sit on it a little bit. I'm gonna look at it. Oh wait, maybe I can't sit on it a little. All right. I might double down. <laughs> I've gone from <laughs> I've gone from sitting on it to possible double down. <laughs> See if your guy's still available. There's yeah, we got two guys that I really do like. I mean, Eli is one of those guys that's kind of like the guy you take really late just because you let everybody else fall <laughs> off the table, and he's like your last chance to get a possible top ten quarterback. But I'm really thinking I'm really like the Kirk Cousins here. I think he I mean, with him and Pryor, I think that's a good pick. And I'm going to kind of hope that Jameis Winston comes back to me because I really think that's a sexy pick. I think that, I think that might be the quarterback sleeper of the year this year. He could eat. I think he could. I think 4,500 yards, what? 35 touchdowns. I'm saying it. You heard it here first. 4,535 for old Jameis. There was some hype last year, but I think it was just too soon. I think this year is going to be that Winston year where he becomes an elite QB1 fantasy play. I think he's going to have top I think he's going to have top 3 top 5 plays every so often here, but come the end of the season, I think he's a QB1. All right, Meredith Prescott's off. Oh, he's dude guy took Winston, Prescott over double. Jameis. That's a little I don't know. That's a favorite. Anytime you take a running first team quarterback yeah. over him. Um, I mean, his chemistry. I'll take him for you here. Winston's yeah, your boy. I'm slacking. Get the, finger, get the finger pointing going. 
Oh, we, look at this. We got a, we got a quarterback Mariota, pocket. Four or five four. picks. There have been quarterbacks here. And I, I'm kind of, I like Mariota too. He, he was really kind of coming into his own before his injury. See, these dudes are almost drafting their backup quarterback before I'm drafting my starter. I still feel good about it. I mean, who the says Kirk Cousins can't outscore Ben Roethlisberger? I mean, that's a who that was real say, life. That happened last year. Who even says Winston's not going to overdo luck or something that could, like that? That could be real life. Or Cam like, Newton. Or Russell Wilson. All right. We got a whole bunch of people off here. We got a couple defenses, and we're mixing in with some Kenneth Dixon, Devontae Parker, who they're also bringing up the height train on him. Phillip Rivers, who's always going to be a great value late at quarterback. I feel like it's gone too long, and I'm going to give me some Thomas Rawls I here. It. I love it. I think he's the best running back in Seattle. I do too. I mean, there's no way they're going to keep him off the field. If he starts out the season getting 10 to 12 touches, and he by far looks like the most spry guy out there, I don't know how they keep him off the field, even if they paid Lacey. Uh, you got to run. Pete Carroll's going. Pete Carroll's going to play the best player. All you right. got to believe in the Pete dog. Stafford's off there. I did wait on tight end, so I think I'm going to get another one here before it gets too bad. I'm going to get O.J. Howard. We talked about the Winston. We talked about all the weapons. I mean, if he's going to be on the football, if he's going to be an every down player, I mean, we, we, you know, we don't know that yet, but. If it comes I mean, to him being an every down player, I mean, watch out for O.J. Howard. I don't see any. I mean, I mean, Braid stock has drastically fell over the last month or so here. I mean, he is next to undraftable at this point. And O.J. Howard, I mean, I know it's a rookie tight end, but if there's going to be a rookie tight end that produces and can be a top 12 play every week, I think it's got to be him. It's got to be. He's the only one, really, besides that guy that the Giants got. But you don't. He's not even going to be an every down yeah, player. Yeah, so You can't. He's going to be a situational player. All right. Here's a runner. Receivers you got Pierre Garcon and San Fran. Mike Williams, the rookie. Marvin Jones. Um, another defense in Seattle. Defense. Jordan Matthews, <laughs> who I mean, he's another next to undraftable guy for me. In twelfth round, <laughs> but it's just crazy. It's, I mean, he did not produce last year, and then he got Alshon coming into town. So that's bad news, Bears. Matt Forte, who I feel yeah. like could be a decent value in the 12th round. I mean, this guy, first half of the season, was getting it done as your RB2 no, for a while. No, he's dead. He's dying. <laughs> who are you looking here? I'm going to scoop. 12th round. You know, I don't even think, I haven't even drafted my son. Well, I got Joe Mixon. I'm going to scoop up another rookie running back who I think could easily steal the job in Washington. I'm going to take me some Perrine right now. They're t I mean, this guy... I really do think he's going to be a week one starter. I really do. We got Minnesota D and Macklin, and I'm going to take another rookie running back who could very well steal the job in Kansas City and Kareem Hunt, who we mentioned earlier in the show. Who I was told you I was going to aim for, where here I am aiming and firing. I'm going to take me and some Kareem Hunt. The staff loves him, and I would not be shocked if come, you know, week three or four that he's getting more touches than Spencer Ware. I mean, you're not paying the piper for these guys. It took them at, you know, the 12, 13 turn here. Yeah, so, yeah, again, the, if we're looking at even 12 teamers, you're talking double digit. You're talking 10th round for these guys. So these guys are already on your bench, and I think these are guys who have serious upside and could be weak plays for you. These are some strong wait-and-see guys for sure. They could turn into some sexy boys for you. We got Arizona D. Coming off the board, we got Mike Wallace, which is, you know, he is what he yeah, is. Yeah, I mean, he's... He did actually surprise a lot of people. He was, last year. but his, his his ceiling is very low. I mean, somehow Bashard Perryman gets it together, gets on the football field, and yeah, he shows Which some flashes. I mean, he had some little bit of something last year, but I just don't know. I mean, Mike Wallace, he's just so unsavory to me. We got Eli Manning, we got Andy Dalton off the board. I love Eli uh, Manning there. I like, love Eli Manning. How the far 13th. have you fallen? Yeah, oh yeah. If you're looking to. I mean, this is this guy's uh, backup quarterback, but if. I mean, if, he could have waited and punched sat him on as it. A sat on it, middle of the 13th round, I mean, sitting on it. Who's it looking Eli at? Manning. Cam Newton? I mean, he could have got a guy. Eli Manning I mean, might end got, up being a starter. Who knows? Jeremy Hill, 13th round, uh, almost a how, 10 
Round drop. I mean, this guy was going How what? Far fifth round. You fallen. Six, mid six, and twelve teams. So in this, probably seven. Probably seventh or something. So he's dead. I mean, he's dropped a solid six, six seven rounds. Oh, there. how far have you fallen? I wouldn't. I would let him fall further. CJ Pro Size, who again, I feel like, I feel like if you're, you have to target one Seattle back. I feel like you do. Besides Lacey, <laughs> but I feel like. On every team, you should be targeting either Rawls or Procise late. I'm feeling that. The value on Rawls and Procise is so much better. I, mean, what, what I feel like they have serious ceiling on them. Lacey in All the 7th right. versus Rawls in the 11th in Procise Pro and 13. 13th. So I'm letting Lacey slide, and wherever I feel comfortable, I'm going to take a Rawls or a Procise. And at this point where it's so deep, I don't even care. I think CJ Procise... Is might be a better play in the PPR, but Thomas Rawls can be that every down guy there if he's healthy. All right, I'm gonna scoop up a guy here and Sterling Shepard. I mean, his stock has taken a plummet, and it's not due Good to value it's, now though. Yeah, it's it really has not been to performance because performance wise, as a rookie receiver, I feel like he played very well. But it's just there's other guys they bring in the rookie Ingram. They got Brandon Marshall, of course. Odell is still there. So I mean, I mean a, this is saying if Brandon Marshall comes in, he lays an egg, he looks done. I mean, if Sterling Shepard gets becomes that wide receiver too, like he I mean, kind Cruz of was last year. So I mean, that's I guess one less this guy to worry about. Thirteen round value. I mean, you're getting him for the same price as you were last year after he had a very solid rookie campaign. Yeah. Just because Brandon Marshall's in town, I mean, I mean Sean Shepard, yeah. sitting. He could sit and wait. Maybe Brandon Marshall, age is caught up with him, and he lays an egg. And this guy just, you I know, mean, I, Shepard is going. Shepard was going higher than this last year as he was a rookie, and he put up good he numbers. Was, I think he was going. He was going, he was going like seventh, eighth round, and in the tens he was probably going eighth or ninth. But still, he was going higher, and he had a good <clears> rookie <throat> campaign. All right, Jay Stewart on the turn, kicker off there. Kicker. All right. Whoa, big. <laughs> I mean. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go with the James White play. Right. We're talking 14th round here. I'm going to get at least one New England back, and who knows. With LeGarrette Blunt out there, any guy could become the man there. We got Giants. And, and we got kickers galore. Oh, uh, kicker on there. They're muddying the waters. I'm going to take Will Fuller just because... It's late as hell. He's a, you know, he did pretty good. It's a boomer bust play. And 14th boom, round, I mean, if you're throwing darts, go for a guy who can get you 30. Kicker Cole Beasley. I'm going to take Ted Ginn here. My last pick of this mock draft. You Beasley know what? Bo I love both those plays. I, love, I mean, they're both kind of the same guy, kind of home run they're, hitters. Yeah, they're both guys who could potentially get 25 I mean, to 30 points I mean, on a bye Ted week if Ginn's, you're forced to play him. If Ted Ginn's playing football with Drew Brees... And he actually holds on to these passes. I mean, he could have some serious weeks for you. I and mean, I know he's going to lay some eggs, but if you catch him on one of these four or five weeks, I mean, he did. I mean, move, I mean, these last two years in Carolina, he did solid wide receiver three production. He really did. I mean, Ted Ginn's going to kind of take that Brandon Cooks role. Obviously, not in the target realm, but in the deep threat, take the top off the defense kind of guy. So Ted Ginn is the guy who might only get you three, four catches a game, but when he gets you the catch, he's going to be over 100 yards and he's going to have one to two touchdowns. All right, got some other Geo, who's probably not going to be in the season until later. Deion Lewis. John Brown. I mean, I don't dead. hate it. John Brown's out there. Carson Wentz, 15th bad, round, not bad. I'm going to take one more flyer here at receiver. Man, my receivers are, besides my first few, I mean, I am going young. I want Corey Davis. I want Sterling Shepard. I'm going Josh Doxson here. Very limited last year, but I truly thought he was my favorite wide receiver coming out of college last year. And with the other guys out, we talked about Pryor's gone. We talked about Garcon's gone. I mean, who's he competing with there? I mean, he's got Crowder. And Crowder and Pryor. Eric, are I mean, yeah, there. Crowder and Pryor are the only other guys. The only guys in the football field with him. Yeah, Garcon and... Uh, and I don't think they really want Crowder outside. I mean, if they, they probably want to keep yeah, Crowder in the, in the slot, slot. So Doxon might be in there. If he shows up, 
and shows well in preseason and whatnot, he might be that guy in the wide rec- in the two wide receiver sets. Yeah, I think he could be an every down play for him. And then last pick of the draft, Adam Thielen, Adam Thielen who I also like at that value, the fifteenth round there. All right, so once again, this is only fifteen rounds here. Most drafts go like twenty rounds, but you know, people start to take kickers and whatnot. You know, it starts muddy in the water, so you just kind of let it go a little bit. Yeah. So here's here's the picture up here, so you guys can definitely see for your own team what technique you're kind of looking at. There's the you know the obvious two running backs right away, try and scoop up some top end guys, and then kind of get some receivers later and there's nobody also went, the no running back technique but really nobody went full on no running back with the three straight wide receivers in this draft though which is very surprising because normally that's an awfully common you usually strategy. get a couple of those guys in there usually i'm one of them maybe it's but, just 12 team maybe it's maybe that's more of a heavy strategy in 12 teamers that they usually do a lot more 12 team leagues but yeah i mean we got four teams that was started with wide receiver wide receiver but nobody did the triple down I mean, I went triple down, but I took Le'Veon Bell in the first. Yeah, me and five had three packs because he took Hopkins, Jeffrey, and Crabtree. I like, I kind of like five, even though Murray in the second's a little unsavory to me. But other than that, I mean, he's, I mean, he's, he's very healthy, solid. If, if I mean, if Murray, I mean, my goodness, Murray stays healthy. I mean, that team's gonna be if out. Kelvin there. Benjamin somehow becomes a good football player again, and that second flex for him, it's kind of watch out for. Team number five there. I like it a lot. Yeah. And I'm not a big high drafting a quarterback high here, but I f- honestly feel like getting Breeze, locking him up in the fifth round, kind of freed me up later on to take some more, to throw some more daggers at some young guys out there with some serious upside. I mean, taking the risk on mixing in the f- early fifth was kind of one of my one. Uh, you know, just get a guy because you like him. But I think. Uh, but I feel like Coleman in his seven. Getting Coleman in that seven saved really their team. It did. It threw a kind of little security blanket over the old Mixon pick. Because you might, you're probably going to start Coleman week one over Mixon. Yeah, if they're not. I mean, if they're saying Mixon's the hands down number one starter, I would probably go with him out there. But I mean, if it's if he's in any way or in any way, shape, or form looking to share time, I'm probably start Coleman week one for sure. Yeah, I feel like my team's definitely a mix of, you know, your old trustees with the guys like A.J. Green, Jordy, and Breeze. But I've got also a lot of young guys kind of sprinkled in there. If you're looking at young guys, I'm taking, you know, Fournette, McCaffrey, Corey Davis, Hunter Henry, (laughs) O.J. Howard, (laughs) Sterling Shepard, Doxon. up on them under 25-year-old dudes. Go for the all-under 25 team. Keep her her league. Any other team you're really feeling? I don't know. I was kind of, kind of not feeling a couple teams. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh no! My goodness. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm looking at looking at. I'm looking at kind of uh, four and ten. Ten I feel like is ten, He started hot with that yeah, Melvin Gordon first, Freeman turn. I love that running back. Running back play there but to, after that I just shit after that Keenan Allen as your first receiver good is just Lord it's God. tough good that Lord. is tough to handle he's already on his IR and Spencer Ware I just good I don't Lord. feel Dude, him Keenan at Allen, all Keenan Allen and Martavis Bryant are number are your top two wide receivers that is so dicey. all of his receivers I mean Fitzgerald will be Fitzgerald good for Fitzgerald clearly his number one wide receiver <laughs> I mean Willie Sneed and he really didn't even address no question I feel like it. this guy didn't even address receiver no he stole Dalvin Cook from me too why did he waste Dalvin Cook on this team I'm mad at him that's probably his best pick actually it is he pissed me besides off besides his first two picks and number like I said number four I don't know why you necessarily take Odell over Elliott but I mean, Odellia is still a sexy boy on your team every week. But Todd Gurley, I feel like the jury's still out on him. C.J. Anderson, I am not feeling. No. Tyreek Hill in the fifth might be a bit of a stretch, but obviously that's kind of a wait and see. Latavius Murray and Frank Gore as those running backs. I don't even know if they're really going to be able to see the field that much late in the season. I don't hate him. As, yeah, he has holes, but he's not. I don't think he's as unsavory as... I don't think he's the most unserious in the land out there. <laughs> what do you think is that? 
I mean, number 10, I'm not feeling. Yeah, number 10 was pretty bad. Right, his running backs are going to save him weeks, if anything. But his receivers have to do something. Right on. All right. So once again, we're going to hit you up on these mocks. I mean, we might even do them more than two, three times a month at this rate. I mean, we're doing stocks them. changing. We're definitely going to switch back between the, t the 10 and 12 teams, maybe even throw in some standards, some two quarterbacks. You never know. Uh, once again, make sure to subscribe on the YouTube here. Check us out on the Twitter. We have that Instagram we now. Jing, jing. We got a jing, jing with the tail wagon. <laughs> Hey, Jing Jing. So we're on that Instagram. Get at us. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to leave a comment below. We'll make sure to get back to you. If you got any questions, email us at tankersfantasyfootball at gmail.com. Get on them. All right. We'll see you again soon here. Thank you so much for watching. Took me a while to get up the horses, but by God, I did it, boy. <laughs> and we got some Jing Jings. Probably has to go poopy doopy. <laughs> Jing Jing's gotta go poopy doopy. So we gotta peace out. See you later.